an oasis in the city. Boston's public garden is all this and more. How and why did it come to be? Before it became the garden, the public garden was the mud flats just west of Boston Common. Um, we know that it would have been dry land thousands of years ago, but when the harbor flooded, it created the mud flats that, um, that were then known as Back Bay. The story of the public garden starts in 1837. By this year, Boston had become one of the world's wealthiest trading ports with a population of about 75,000 people. It was a picture of thriving industrialization. But one man began to recognize an unspoken need in the city. A public space for gathering and relaxing where an imagined world of beauty could become real life. That man was Horace Gray. Horace was one of the Boston Brahmins, a collective of Boston's upper class who sponsored investments through the city. Brahmins believed in a balance between personal business ventures and the enhancement of their community through cultural pursuits. George Hillard, a member of this elite group, expressed these philosophies in an address to the Mercantile Library Association. A country in which all men are engaged in acquisition of property without books, without scholars, without ideas, contains within itself the element of destruction and is in constant danger of becoming shattered to pieces by the explosive force of its own selfish percentages. Horace Gray took these values to heart, devoting his life earnings and personal passion to this single project. Gray brought the public garden to life. He was the beneficiary of a classical education and he may well have known of an excellent model for the idea of a public garden in the city. That model was the Forum of Peace, a grand open space with elaborate plants, one that was also the product of an elite benefaction. Built by Vespasian in 75 AD, the complex included a vast plaza, a temple, covered walkways, and even the city's first museum. Ancient writers marveled at the number of exquisite works of art on view. Like Horace Gray, Vespasian was a member of the elite class who put his wealth to public benefit. The previous emperor, Nero, had taken over huge portions of the city for his vast golden house, with associated parklands and even an artificial lake. The Forum of Peace was a step to restoring public land to the Roman people and making open space for the enjoyment of all. On February 1st, 1839, Gray led 17 Bostonians to establish a group called the Proprietors of the Botanic Garden to petition the city for a lease of land. The lease was granted for a plot of land west of the Boston Common. The first decade of the garden's life might be hard to recognize today. Its most elaborate display $1,500 worth of tulips that Gray imported from England, a sum worth of $45,000 in today's value. These attracted the public eye not only for their high cost, but even more as it was the first time tulips had been imported into the United States. In its first decade, Gray underwrote all of the garden's expenses, but in 1847, he went bankrupt. No other member of the Brahmin elite were interested in supporting the garden. For the next 12 years, the garden would be put at the forefront of a custody battle. In 1859, the city of Boston stepped in, inspired by the establishment just one year prior to New York City's Central Park. They are incredibly important to the people of Boston to have that open space. Um, there aren't a lot of large, large park, parks in the area and um, having that open space to be able to get outside, to be able to stop moving and to have space to just not move for a little while, which you can't do downtown very easily. Um, those are all really important things. Uh, the trees, the height of the trees, the scale of the trees. But, um, but those are also things that were um, different from its use originally. Originally the, the garden when it was first planted would have been fairly quaint and a little over the top when it comes to like plantings because it just would have been a lot of very new 
things. Um, but now it's become this mature landscape. Public amenities and green spaces inside crowded cities was becoming an acknowledged public good. In 1859, a public vote by the citizens of Boston led to a restoration to protect the land of the garden. Since the area of Boston's public garden was in its early development, a competition for its design was announced. In 1859, the public garden design competition resulted in 22 submissions, with the winner being George Mayhem, a Massachusetts native and Harvard alum. Mayhem would eventually become an architect and civil engineer, but at this point he was quite inexperienced in his field as his proposal for the garden was one of his first projects. In order to make a name for himself, Mayhem's plan was ambitious. In addition to geometric flower beds, statues, fountains, trees, and mood-evoking exotic flowers, he also included a space for a city hall, a greenhouse, and even a children's playground. In short order, this plan was tamed by William Doug, later the superintendent of common and public ground. Under Doug, the space of the garden was kept clear of buildings and reserved for nature. The garden quickly became a popular public spot. There were annual flower contests in which new species that had never been seen before in the city were displayed. These flowers included camellias, banana plants, sago palms, crotons, Dracaenas, rubber plants, canna lilies. Boston now had a public show place in which elaborate aesthetics and displays of beauty and elegance were not the preview only of the elite, but instead on display for all to view. The public garden became a multi-sensory experience that attracted and affected multitudes of Bostonians. This is similar to the experience that scholars of Roman gardens describe for people in antiquity. As in Rome, so too in Boston, a garden is a place with the power to transform the idea of one's environment into an immersive experience. The, the experience of the garden has evolved with the city and the people that experienced it in the 1860s experienced it fundamentally different than someone would experience it in 2021. Um, but I think that's part of its story is that the the, the, as the landscape evolves and grows with the city, the people experience it in different ways, and it means different things to different people over time. In spirit of Horace Gray, the Friends of the Public Garden was established. In late 1960s, a group of Bostonians came together to preserve the beauty of the public garden. With annual dues of only $2, in its first year, about 500 people joined. Today, there are about 3,000 members from more than 131 communities around Massachusetts. A project created by a member of Boston's most elite group became a place embraced and supported by the public at large. The garden is a special place for all to visit, experience, embellish, inspire, and evoke a greater sense of community. However, to say it is just a garden is an understatement. It has a value that has transcended a vision. From earlier generations to modern society, once an idea as simple as a seed has blossomed into an oasis. The garden's influence spreads beyond its own grounds to infuse the city of Boston with a sense of beauty and culture. The garden is a destination that rewards every visitor with a personal encounter with nature. In a big city, there are a lot of options, many things to do, but the garden is a place where you can just be. It's a breath of fresh air in a crowded place, a harbor for tranquility and peace. It really is an oasis in the city.